Hey guys, um, this is uh, the third um, Oracle Medicine Report. The previous ones I had done probably almost a year ago and Oracle Medicine is basically what I call uh, my healing modality and the sessions that I offer clients. Um, I haven't ever posted a recording or, of a demo session before on my YouTube channel, so I'm pretty excited to share this one with you guys. Um, there's a few reasons why I decided to share this one, particularly because last week we really dove deep into the root chakra, and many of you are asking me, you know, how do we actually heal our root chakra? And this is really often a very difficult question for me to answer because the root chakra, especially the lower chakras and physicality, you know, they're just so complex and full of density and full of information and so multifaceted that is really hard to come up with, you know, a single sentence or a five minute answer. And this is why I felt like this session with my client named Betsy was just the perfect way to demonstrate just how multi-layered healing can really be. So this session actually ran about two hours, but the beginning and the end, we kind of were chatting about private matters. So I kind of clipped um, those parts where they were specific personal information. I, of course, um, asked her permission if I could post this because I was really excited. Um, this was... Uh, a great example of a session of when the client is super ready and really willing to look at the hard stuff and is just on the precipice of a big timeline shift. And, you know, Betsy really exemplified what is possible through this kind of healing work. Um, so I'm hoping that through this video, we can demonstrate as well just how multifaceted uh, multidimensional healing really is because you're going to see us kind of jumping from thing to thing and how um, over time it really loops back to the core theme. It's us working through these layers that, you know, without sometimes somebody comes and they want to heal one core wound. And for the most part, healers try to go in and they grab at it. They talk about it. They try to take that sing singular thing. And this is really what Western medicine does, right? They identify this one single thing and separate it from the rest of the network. But rarely does this really work because chances are there are 10, 15, 20 layers of stuff actually layered on top of that core wound that is in the way. So imagine there's layers of cardboard on top of the thing you're trying to grab. You're not going to be able to get it because all these things is in the way. And so I'm really excited. You know, this is the stuff that I love to get nerdy about. And this was just a really great session. And I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, so just a little bit of background because I did clip the beginning while we were talking about her situation. Um, she basically told me that she had been in a PTSD nervous loop for a long time because she had just sold her house and she was laid off um, from her work and she had to move within a month and she's trying to launch this healing business and it felt like to me that the universe was really corralling her to um, step into her life purpose but of course there was all these money fears what am I going to do to make money I'm not going to have enough how am I going to start my business and all of these, these fears were activating her past trauma of you know homelessness and abandonment and poverty and so it was keeping her locked in this fear response and how many of us you know resonate with that situation right we can just stay in that frozen state for years and not really um, jump into our mission so this is why I really thought this was a great um, session for you guys. So by the end of the session, Betsy felt connected to higher self. She was confident. She was even excited about her new timeline. And hours later, she said she hasn't felt that relaxed in maybe two years. So there are three main reasons I wanted to post this particular client session. The first one is to demonstrate the dynamic and multifaceted nature of healing and why, you know, multidimensional healing to me is just so effective in engaging in holistic healing of our energy, of our spirituality, of our emotions, of our trauma. Um, and so you know, why is it complicated when people ask, how do I heal myself? Well, there's just a lot involved. The reason why I'm able to jump and you'll see in the session where we're working on one layer and then it'll bring me to a different layer. And then all of a sudden we're working or it seems like we're going all over the place in the body, but eventually it resolves the core issue. 
And the reason why I'm able to jump from layer to layer with ease is because I've spent years working with all these angles through daily practice with myself every single day, hours and hours, right? This is just the stuff that I geeked out on and got very technical with. So this level of multidimensional awareness and effectiveness is what I teach in my shamanic healing school. Um, and it's why, you know, it's now going from a one-year program to an ongoing program that has enough content to work with for three to five years. Um, because I realized that there's just so many things that we can break down and clearly these skills, you know, were carried from past lives um, as a master healer. And I'm really wanting to support healers in their advancement of knowledge and technique so that you guys can really go out there and support humans in the healing from planetary slavery. This is a very multidimensional issue. And in order to be effective, in order to really get people's souls connected to their bodies, we need to know very technical things about the multidimensionality of our light body and our all the layers of our being. So this is really to demonstrate how multifaceted and effective this process can be. So the second thing is that last week we talked about the root chakra and I was trying to just talk about how complex the root chakra is. And this session is really going to illustrate how complex the root chakra healing can be because all of these distortions and surface level traumas can literally be in the way and hide everything underneath it. Um, and in the end, what's underneath with the deepest stuff, the core stuff, it's really in our physicality, in our DNA, in our root, in our reality, right? So, you know, that's actually what's creating the chaos and the confusion in our life most of the time. And we'll think it's, you know, all these surface level things and we never get to the root of it. And so you'll see in the session that it took almost an hour of digging through the layers to get to the root. But when we finally do get there, Everything gets put into perspective and we're able to remove from the reality what isn't harmonious with the soul's path and integrate what is. Um, and the third final reason is that I wanted to demonstrate what a productive session like this takes. And it takes two parts. And I think majority of it, the very important part, is a ready and open participant, right? Who's ready to do the work, who's ripe for shift, who has a desire for greatness and is willing to look at the hard stuff. Okay, this is like to have a session like this, you know, because my skills, they're always the same. It's like, you know, you run a marathon and you always know how to run. So why is it that sometimes my clients have extraordinary results? And I'm, I'm going to say most of them at this point because I'm really attracting people that are ready to do the work. And once in a while, I get somebody that just doesn't feel anything. And nine times out of 10 is actually because that person is not really involved in their self-healing practice. They don't really you know, put in the effort. They're trying to find other people who can do the work for them and it just doesn't work. And so we need a ready and open participant who's ready and willing. And then of course, the second part of that is a skilled facilitator who knows what she's doing and has a clear feel to be able to perceive all the simple and subtle nuances of different dimensional energies that are all playing together. And this is what makes an effective and advanced healer. And I am just so excited to um, share this session with you. So let's dive right out. Yeah, so as I was saying, with any of these very dramatic situations that we're in, where it just feels like everything is, you know, changing and things are closing in really fast. And you're like, you know, where am I even going to go? I don't even know. When things are just all piling up and it just seems really intense, we can usually perceive these situations in different ways and I think that the highest way that serves us the most is to perceive them as an initiation okay and what an initiation is is basically a uh, extreme or intense experience that basically is a portal between one state of being to another right so the usual initiations are from when you're a child into adulthood in the ancient times the tribes will literally take the boys out you know and do like a night hunt where they don't eat and they're out in the woods and it's like this really intense experience that um, brings them a certain energy um, of maturity of growth of just this intensity that ushers them into a greater sense of self or adulthood or whatever it is right so on this path of soul growth 
we're kind of consistently moving through initiations between childhood and adulthood in different ways, in different aspects of our being. Because even though we are a certain age, you know, parts of us are always evolving into greater and greater levels of maturity. And so as you are in this training and of becoming a healer and you are, you know, really, um, I say you are really making steps, you know, you're taking the classes and you're building the things you've been steadily taking steps for many years to prepare yourself to um, start this new timeline, you know, as a healer, which is actually something that you've always, you were always meant to be, right? You have just such a kind heart. And from what I've known about you in the years that I've known you, I just, when I think of you, I just think of you as like the sweetest energy. And I feel like you just have this giving, loving heart that's at the heart of a healer. And so I think that the healer's path was kind of always meant to be yours. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it's like all of these experiences are kind of sharpening your will and creating intense transitions for many parts of you that are getting ready to step forward of being this, playing this role on a greater level. Um, and so, whoo, I think that initiations are often like a test, right? It's kind of like, all right, we know all of these things in theory, how are we gonna apply them in real life? So for example, I think my greatest initiation in my whole life was really when Kara died, yeah, um, for sure. When she, and when she did, you know, it was an initiation in that, you know, I was like, okay, I could either just fall apart and die, or I could just apply, I would apply all the wisdom and the knowledge and the healing information that I have, and apply it to my life in the best way that I could. And it's through the application and through the intention and the, the um, exertion of your will that makes it an, an initiation or something that's just happening to you. Does that make sense? Yes. So then I think that then you need like a North star to get you through this, a very clear North star. So obviously the North star is, and I think has been for you, you know, becoming a healer, right? Is starting okay. a business that really supports you financially and not just a little bit but like creates a stable and abundant reality for you to continue to heal and evolve your own soul and actually do your work as a light worker as you're meant to right and so this needs this clear north star we're just going to imprint this in the um in the higher dantian here in the third eye in the crown. Okay. And we're just going to visualize right now, okay? What it feels like to wake up in the morning and you have this beautiful home that's filled with beautiful things that, you know, uplift your being, that you love, things that you love, things that are beautiful, things that feel like in resonance with your the core of your being. And it's a space that you just, that inspires you. You wake up and you feel like, oh, this is home and it's comfortable and it's beautiful and I love it here. And then as you wake up and you go into your day, it's very peaceful and everything is um, kind of in their place. You know, there's nothing for you to figure out and no crisis to respond to and no people to deal with, just you in your element preparing to share your healing love with the world <sighs> and just visualize you, you know, having a really great breakfast and maybe going into a morning practice and really feeling just at peace with yourself. And, you know, even in your morning practice, it doesn't feel like, okay, well, oh crap, you know, what is the big thing that I'm healing today? And it feels like so big and I don't, I don't even know if I can ever heal from this, you know, if none of those, none of that is even there, you're just, you know, breathing and relaxed and feeling safe and happy. And then maybe 
after your morning practice and your tea, you're ready to see your clients for the day. And you're so excited because you know that, you know, you're going to create an impact in their life that really helps them create a better life for themselves. And it's a very fulfilling work for you. And you know that you are creating more than enough abundance through giving this love that you have inside of you that you know is so valuable, right? Because if there's one thing that you know about yourself, you know that you're a loving person, don't you? Yes. And you know that you are a very unconditionally giving person, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a Ooh, yeah, and as I'm saying that, there's a little bit of almost this fear coming up in the heart. And the reason I think is that, you know, um, in my reality, in Z's world, I think being a generous and a loving person, these are very valuable things. But, you know, even I have experienced just being taken advantage of or being overly generous or people misunderstanding me. And all of those things can influence us to feel that our love and our generosity is dangerous and that it will trick us into situations that are not good for us. Yeah. Okay. So here's like a, whew, I call this a reversal spin. This is like, do you kind of feel that anxiety bubbling up in the heart? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because here we're touching on a part that is carrying this trauma. And as I'm talk, I'm as I'm saying, you know, to the part, your love is valuable and your generosity is valuable, your part's coming up and saying, This lady is crazy. You know, we were loving and we were so generous. And look, you know, where it's led us. People take advantage of us and they're so mean. And, you know, we we <laughs> kind of you feel that protector energy starting to bubble up, right? Mm-hmm. So let's just communicate with that part for a second. Can I say, you know what? The other mm-hmm. thing about it is, mm-hmm. in like that situation with my mother and my sister, and also like my my friends up here, you know, I'm they know I'm unemployed. I'm in a crisis. If I don't show up or if I'm unvaccinated, that that's another issue. Like nobody's calling and asking me how I am. I'm like, wow, you guys, I show up for you all the time and you're not even mm-hmm. help. It's just ter- It's just a like, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this ties into um, a worthiness thing. When you, um, when these parts are in the front seat, you can just miss things, right? So because you might want, because you're wanting friends or because you're just wanting love and because you just want to provide support for your friends, you might not even notice that they're not the right friends for you. You might even not notice that your needs aren't being met. And if you're somebody that grew up not having your needs being met and you had to consistently like, you know, um, kind of overcompensate to be liked or to be accepted, by family and friends, then this pattern can continue on where you don't think about your needs because you just um, are operating in the default that your needs aren't met. Right. Totally. Right. Whew. Or and not so only then... that they're not met, it's like I don't have needs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everyone else has them, but I don't, right? Right. So. <laughs> Right, exactly. And it's like when you're inside of that trauma pattern, you don't even notice that you're just giving and there's no reciprocity because not receiving anything is like your default of what reality is. Right. (sighs) And so then when you realize that, then you can kind of zoom out and say, okay, I'm going to make boundaries now. I'm going to make changes. These friends that don't check on me and probably just like that I'm so giving and are just Mm -hmm. like moping and sucking up my energy like those people are not worthy of being my friends yep I've started to weed my garden this year very um consciously yeah yeah and so 
I'm gonna go come back to this this um, part here, and we're just gonna start to reprogram and re-entrain her, um, because the higher self, like your higher self, I can feel this um, higher self energy starting to come in. It's this peace, peaceful energy, this knowing energy, right? You can kind of feel the anxiety on the bottom of the heart, but also feel this coolness on the top of the heart that feels calming. And that part of you knows that your love and the bigness of your generosity is your greatest gift, right? It's something that is valuable about you because this is the backbone of what makes a good healer. Not, you know, technicalities and degrees and, you know, all those things, but all of those things are great and useful and they're what healers need. But if there's not that heart of service and a heart of really caring about people, you know, those doctors that you go in and you're like, are you going to kill me? Or are you here to help me? Like, I don't even know because <laughs> your vibe is just so whack. Like they're clearly oh. not there because they like to help people. Right. <laughs> and then when you meet one, who's like really a healer, it, and you're like, Oh, that's what a, he a doctor who's a healer is like, Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I've met two in my life, just two. Both of my dogs are at my feet, they're grounding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? And so I want you to just lean into that for a second, okay? Because whew, we really want this um, algorithm to land in the body. This belief, this new belief. Because the truth is that your access to your love is your source of infinite abundance okay your capacity to love is your source of infinite abundance that's amazing that's amazing yeah and it's interesting because you can really feel the truth in that and we can really um break that down but of course, it this energy, this higher self energy is going to bump up against all of these things. And it's taking me right down into the root chakra here, actually. So we're going to start to swirl energy through the root chakra, through the cossacks, through the pelvic girdle. And I'm just going to send a clearing frequency through here. And we're going to access all of the ancestral energy, all of the environmental energy. Ooh. Let's bring in Betsy's higher self and her angelic galactic team. And we're just requesting assistance in the absolute clearing of all geometries, distortions, and fears and networked with any poverty belief systems or fears of poverty. And we're releasing these energies from her physical body and all layers of her etheric body and her DNA as well as any ancestors that might be holding this frequency in her body and field. Ooh. I felt like there was one who was really glad to be released from that. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants to be sitting around afraid all day. <laughs> it was like joyous that this ancestor was like, holding his arms up and going, oh, yeah, <laughs> finally. So here's the interesting thing. So I remember when I first got pregnant with Kara and I was living in the RV. By the way, Kara's coming back. I've confirmed that this new pregnancy is her soul. I knew it. She told me that <laughs> last year. Oh, so sweet. So, yeah, last um, last time she was in, in my belly, I was in the RV and I just got pregnant and I really hadn't um, anchored my business to an extent where I felt like I would be ready to 
you know, have a baby. And so Kara started teaching me about, you know, creating and all these things. And one of the first things that happened was, you know, there's a reaction thing. And it's like this. Um, think about a time when you had to fix your house. Let's for the example, right? And you're like, let's say I need $4,000 and say you didn't have it. So immediately the response in the old patterns would be, oh no, I don't have enough money. How am I going to make enough money? And then it spirals into this fear and you get all tense and scared, right? But then one day, Kara showed me that we can just choose to respond in a totally different way. And so one day when my mind started to get afraid, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a baby. How the heck am I going to pay for diapers? You know, all these mm-hmm. things. Kara jumped in and was like, okay, we're starting to, you know, slide down the hill. And I was like, I am so excited that I have no money because that means I get to create something entirely new. Oh, wow. That's great. (laughs) And the vibration of fear and the vibration of excitement is very similar in our body. It creates that same kind of jittery feeling in our nervous system. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to let that kind of run through the system for a second. And I can feel something in the solar plexus. So I'm just going to pull this out real quick. And clear. (sighs) Okay, so we're going to hold that thought for a second and just work in the solar plexus because we want to open up some space to fully integrate that concept. And so we have skeptics in our system, right? You know, we have the parts of us that are like, I know that I'm a great healer and I know that. I am so capable of loving and supporting people. And then there's other parts of us that are like, yeah, right. Who do you think you are to be successful? Nobody in our family has made it. Look at our sister. You know, she's not an artist and look at our mom and look at this person and look at nobody in the world succeeds doing what they love. And then they just (laughs) lament their way. Um, And so we want to make sure that we're just aligning. All layers of our solar plexus here and higher self, galactic team, we're commanding for a clearing, restoration, removal of all distortions, personality discrepancies, false beliefs, which are hindering the integration of this new operating system. And if there are any parts that are frozen in time or any miasms that are frozen in certain holding patterns, go ahead and release them from all layers and levels into higher self patterns there yeah and feel that power coming in i know that you've had moments in time when you felt powerful and like you can right you were made to do it this is your purpose you are allowed to feel that way give yourself permission to feel the fullness of how great it is to be you. Again, let's go ahead and just activate all ins, all fractured personalities, and just go ahead and reintegrate them into the core personality crystal. There. 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 Whew. Ah. Okay, so that's taking me right into the right leg and the hip and the knee. Yeah, my right leg, um, that right leg actually can get swollen. And then also my hip has a, I, right before I went to the Peace Corps, I was playing Frisbee and I like, yeah, I like hurt my lower back really bad. And I was able to eventually 
get the you know get it back so i go to the peace corps but it's kind of never been the same are you here hello yeah you're here okay can you hear me yes i can hear you okay i think we got i think we got disconnected for a second yeah um, i think so what's too. the I... last thing that you heard me say oh my right hip my right leg and hip oh Oh, okay. So that's, um, that wasn't too long ago. Sometimes I have my phone just like, I, I'm not looking at the screen and then like 10 minutes will have gone by and I didn't notice that it disconnected and I would just be talking the whole time. Oh, that <laughs> happens to me. That happened to me yesterday. <laughs> oh my God. Whew. Okay. Um, can you, um, repeat what you said because all I heard was something about the Peace Corps oh so right before I went to the Peace Corps like a couple of just all a couple of months I was at a Grateful Dead concert and playing frisbee and I went to grab the frisbee and I I, I uh, jerked my lower back so bad I drank eight beers and I was not even drunk and I had a, a half a hit of acid and it didn't do anything it was just trying to like get the pain so I finally got it I finally got better enough to go to the Peace Corps and it kind of worked itself out, but it's sort of never been the same. And my right leg, it's a little bit bigger than my left one. And it's like a little bit um, retains water a little. Mm. Yeah, so let's take a look here because this feels like an ancestral energy and it runs right from right in the right breast as well. Um, so it starts on the right side of the right breast, like right underneath the armpit, okay. and then it swivels around the breast into the sternum and then down the belly, through the hip and through the knee. So let's run this line here. Let me see what I can get from this. Whew. Okay, yeah, so this is from like a male ancestor who was tricked into a situation where he thought he was being given a really great opportunity but it turns out that it was like a scam and it just ruined his whole life um whew. and it seems like this happened sometime in like the 1800s or something like that you think it was long scotland long. maybe scotland yeah, it feels like uh, European. Yeah, because my Devon, I, I did a little work with Devante one day, and he thought that was like a an ancestral lineage that would that you could lose everything all of a sudden, and that was part of what was going on with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna run a source frequency whoo, whoo, through this entire line here, and I'm actually I'm seeing this ancestor. He's in the field here. And I'm just going to command for our team to lift this ancestor right up into the source field, lifting him up into heaven whoo, so that he's no longer frozen in time, frozen in the miasm, frozen in the DNA, affecting Betsy's life. Whoo. Here we go. Whoo. Okay, we're going to restructure any of this frozen beliefs that you know, things always go wrong when we go in a new direction that we can't trust, you know, life. And, you know, we also have to be on guard and cautious. Whew, go ahead and release all of those energies from Betsy's masculine side. Whew. Yeah, and I'm going to just go ahead and say that this is probably a huge underlying energy of where the self-sabotaging is happening. Yeah. From the masculine side here because the feminine side like when I tune into your feminine side she is born ready she was like she's excited you know when you're working on your business like there's a new energy that comes in isn't there like when you're yeah. building outside or like you're like you feel that excitement you feel the love you're like wow like something is really sparking a alive in myself exactly right? so that's your feminine so I feel like the feminine is like you know doing well I feel a little bit of pain in the shoulder. So we're going to look at that in a second. But this is an a inner masculine issue because um, here's the interesting thing. Our masculine side is the one that kind of creates the actions. 
So our feminine is like got the inspiration, got the imagination, got the creativity, but our masculine has to create the right environment and the right structure for that creativity to flow into reality. Just a practical example of that is, you know, you're like, okay, I want to do this business. Your masculine side says, okay, every day for four hours from this time to this time, from this time to this time, Monday to Friday, we're just going to sit down and work on our business, no matter what is happening, right? Now, that's only four hours a day. You have plenty of other time in the day to do other things. And so a healthy masculine would prioritize your business at all costs so that there's continuity, right? That the feminine gets to be creating that timeline consistently, even if if it's for one hour every day, there is consistency right? Now, a wounded masculine will prioritize everything else above that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I definitely have a wounded masculine. Yep. And I would say that a lot of that was coming from this ancestral energy. And let's go ahead and dive a little deeper here. Okay, and this energy is here, the top right of the head. And I'm going to run through a restructuring frequency over the head here. And so this is a, um, it's like, it's bouncing off between the top of the head and the cervical area where I feel like there's a little bit of inflammation. Like when I just gently poke um, the top of the skin here in the pelvic girdle, just between the, um, the pelvis between the two hip bones, like right, all the little, all the flesh, if I start poking that area, it feels like there's soreness and there's inflammation. And so we want to look at this. And so I want to ask if you've experienced any um, physical sexual trauma in this life. Yeah, I had an unwanted pregnancy and uh, I was traumatized by the abortion doctor. And then I had to, and I, you know, he didn't go through with it. And then I had my gynecologist do it. Okay. Yeah. So that's very connected to, you know, the process of birthing, which is what you're really doing when you are creating, right? And especially something that is so aligned, like um, you know, remember in the womb class, we talked about the top Dantian and the middle Dantian and the lower Dantian. Yeah. So the top two Dantians in your field are rotating great because your thought, you know, the top of the head, your idea, your inspiration is, I want to start a business helping people heal. And so the heart, you know, the motivation I feel for you is very pure because you're so loving. You really just want to help people. You feel like you want to support people. And who you feel like this love that you have in your heart, you want to share it with people to help them on their healing journey. Would you agree with that? Yes. So then the next step would be for that um, cosmic sperm to come down into the womb and land so that it can birth into your physical reality. So something's happening down here that's not allowing that process to complete. You know, it's funny because I didn't like right now, I almost can feel my, my uterus and it didn't even, it didn't start until we started the session. So it's sort of like responding to everything you're doing. Yeah. And this is, I can feel that inflammation going down the leg now um, and it's releasing. Okay. Releasing out the hip and out the thighs and out the lower back. So let's see if this is when. Okay, so this is the thing that's connected to the left shoulder here. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just gonna breathe for a second and let the energy run through and then we're gonna take a look in the right shoulder. Okay, so this is about support. Um, the feminine, the creative side, the feminine aspect, is feeling like it's like just shouldering, it's shouldering, it's carrying the whole thing by herself. 
And she's like, I need support. I'm not feeling supported. I'm not feeling safe. I don't feel like there's state space being created for me because the, the masculine is really not right. He's like, he's like afraid. He's like, I'm scared of our new future. Like the new direction is scary. We're not doing this. And so the feminine is feeling, you know, unsupported and alone. And like, it's just carrying all the responsibility of creating this new timeline. And part of this feeling unsupported, which is also bouncing off on the lower back here, the lower pelvis, um, the cossacks and the lower spine here that I'm just tapping on, it's kind of a reoccurring pattern or energy of feeling unsupported, feeling abandoned. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and sort of release that energy from the field. <sighs> I hear you. Yes. Yeah, and at this point, there's very little trust because the feminine knows that she can't get things done on the power of her pure creative genius, right? Because she needs that masculine action energy to make things actually happen in 3D. So she knows she can't succeed by herself. And that's the frustrating part, but she's trying, you know, she's like, she knows what she wants. She's got her heart on the goal. So she's trying her best, but she's also feeling powerless because she knows she can't do it herself. And so there's kind of a loop here whoo, between like, just this oscillating between, I can do it, I got this. And oh my God, I can't do this. And I can do this and I can't do this. And whoo. I'm just letting those energies just flow through the system. Ooh, there. <sighs> okay. And let's bring me right back to the cervix area here in the lower back. Oh, that just got released some kind of like bubble, big bubble of energy right behind my sternum. Mm hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so whew, we want to work on this worthiness bit now. Because um, this is connected to that back of the heart energy <sighs> of receiving. And those are kind of, that's a scary word a little bit for you sometimes. Mm hmm. And I think part of it is that uh, I think that when we're young and we're little and we're sensitive, our parents, like, they'll say things, you know, for example, my parents will say like, you know, oh, you, you can't do that. You can't be a musician. You're not going to be able to survive. You should do this. And I'm telling this because I love you. But what they're doing is like they teaching me, uh, a vibration of love that's not actually love so from a young age we learn that love equals pain or support equals control and so we kind of close ourselves down to receiving because we think if we receive then that means it's going to hurt us Okay, so we want to reprogram the pattern here in the back of the heart into receiving equals joy, equals being appreciated, <sighs> equals living a life of ease. Okay, and then like living a life of ease is triggering this response in the solar plexus here. Um, so let's see here. Higher self, galactic team, activate all is in the first three levels related to the highest priority occupants, which are resonating um, in reversal of the vibration of I deserve to live a life of ease. Bring in those is, mirror opposite is, merge together with each other with a Christ opposites up the levels. 
bring in all the necessary Christ offices to remove the occupants themselves. Whew. Whoa, here we go. Wow. What was in there? Who was in there? Oh man, I'm not, I'm not really looking at the details because there's a few layers. Whew. You know, ancestral and present life and influence and inner children, all of that. So what we're doing is just kind of um, the effect, the efficient way of doing this is just clearing out all of those things that are not relevant at this time. Okay, great. <laughs> so clean up all these is, their opposite is, merge together with each other with the Christ opposites of the levels, bring in all the necessary Christ opposites to remove the occupants themselves, clean up demons, thought forms, soul fragments, personalities of other people, ancestral geometries, frozen miasms, frozen personalities, subconscious beliefs, and etc. on the first three levels, then all levels. Whew. Okay, we're going to radiate this frequency through all layers and levels of Betsy's physical and light bodies, through all dimensionalities and all timeline realities, okay? Whoo! There. Are you feeling that move? Yeah, my solar plexus and also uh -huh. the second chakra, third chakra, let's see, second mm. chakra, solar plexus. I mean... <sighs> Sacral chakra. Sacral chakra, right. Yep. No, that makes a lot of sense because here's the thing. Living a life of ease means pleasure. Right. Right. Creating is pleasurable. And, you know, you've, you've started to taste that when you are, you know, working on your website or taking your class and you feel that purpose. Yeah, I love it. And you, and you, you feel that pleasure in your body, right? Or like your body is doing something that fulfills you. Ooh. my dog is snoring hold on <laughs> your dog is living a life of ease oh they i <laughs> they've been snoring a lot lately it's funny Ooh. i'm tired of that Okay, so now I feel there is something that is on the lower right side of the womb area here that we're just going to pull out. This is just some outdated foreign energy. Just going to pull that out. <sighs> yeah, because this is the this is the vibration in which you start to access kind of out of this world solutions and um, innovation when you have the spark of genius it's really when not you know rarely ever if you're just scared and pissed off that you you know you sold your house and now you didn't want to sell your house and now blah, blah, what am I going to do like that that kind of conflict energy rarely do you get that spark of genius when you're kind of rolling around in that but if you are in this higher vibration of Everything happens for a reason. And I am creating, I'm actively creating my highest timeline. And I have everything inside of me to generate abundance with ease and pleasure. When you're in these vibrations of truth, it's easier for these sparks of genius to come in, right? Whoosh. Clear there okay so i'm coming in here now in the lower womb there's some stuff in here that's just taking up space and taking up room and so we want to just clear all of this out so higher self galactic team activate all is in the first three levels related to the highest priority occupants in betsy's sacral chakra they're not of her own soul's essence and not of her highest soul's essence and love and joy for them to be present. Whew. And bring in these is, mirror opposite is, merge together with each other with the Christ opposites of the levels. Bring in all the necessary Christ opposites to remove the occupants themselves. Whew. 
queen of demons, thought forms, soul fragments, personalities of other people, energy signatures of other beings, cooperations, creations, beliefs, ancestors, outdated personality patterns, and etc. The first three levels, then all levels throughout all of her physical and light bodies, all of her genetics, and all levels of her being in other dimensionalities and timeline realities. Woo. <sighs> really just let the energy work here. Whoa. <sighs> Yeah, there we go. <sighs> Feel that lower back release as well. <sighs> okay. And this is really settling. This is finally opening up the space here in the lower back pelvic girdle, the root, the lowest part of the, your spine there, the, the pelvic plate and your cossacks and really releasing the tension there so you're actually able to sink into the root chakra here. Ooh. Now it seems like you haven't really been down here for a while, meaning you haven't been like clicked into your physical body and fully present fully inside of the body and inside of the present moment for a while. And this is, you know, while it sounds dramatic, is really quite a common experience. Most people actually exist in a brainwave state that's kind of uh, not in the present moment. And the reason for that in the false matrix is that it makes people the easiest to mind control because if people aren't ever clear enough to tune in with how they're really feeling, then they probably won't notice that, you know, the cabal or whatever is in, in power. And so whew, for us, of course, trauma and all sorts of different things, fight or flight response, looping thoughts and all these things, they all keep us from being in the root chakra. And of course, fears of survival and all of these things also creates constriction in the root chakra as well. So we're just opening up into the root here and starting to release any constriction. You might feel relaxed for the first time in a long time, almost. Mm -hmm. It's traveling kind of up my body, the relaxation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like there's like just this little ringing source of fear that's just vibrating inside of you. And it's like just subtly creating anxiety and fear and you just can't touch it. It's just there. Right. And it's just like you have to really slow down to be able to access these deep core levels of fear. <sighs> Okay, so now we're coming into a core wound deep in the root chakra here that is really reflected in your experience with your home, okay? So it feels like that there is a disconnection to the body. And I think that this is a major initiation that you need because having a relationship with the body 
and having a very deep and intimate relationship with your body is one of the most important things to being a good healer, right? Right. Because the body, as you probably know, is the one that's carrying the memories, that's processing the trauma, that for the most part is the one that, you know, is carrying the pain and the fears and the programs is all held in the system. And so when we're out of touch with the body, it's almost impossible to make real progress in our healing because it's mental, right? It's like we're thinking about our trauma, but we're, unless we're in tune with our body, we're not actually feeling the trauma all the way and feeling the trauma all the way is how it releases from the field, right? Um, And that's not to say it's not, it's a different thing than thinking about the trauma event. It's not about replaying the event. It's just about feeling the feelings that the event created in the body and allowing the body to feel it all the way because how trauma gets trapped in the body is the trauma event creates a feeling, but because it's so uncomfortable, we actually dissociate from the feeling. Mm -hmm. And then that locks the feeling inside of our body instead of it processing and being felt all the way to be released. So lately, you know, when I'm in this PTSD thing, I feel it so much in my body. And I was like, this is how it felt in the original trauma. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And this is very common in a lot of extraordinary trauma events, like will literally numb out. I mean, some people will literally just leave their bodies, right? In Mm -hmm. like super extreme trauma. And the, dis, um, the disassociating is like a protection mechanism of the brain um, because, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're learning all about that. Yeah. And so whew. I've also dissociated myself. Mm-hmm. But you need to experience it to really help people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, kind of a part of the, the dealio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the thing is that Um, because so there's a part really deep in the root chakra here that does not feel safe in the body it doesn't feel comfortable in the body it doesn't like the body doesn't like being in the body and so this I mean I I feel like our house is just a a greater part of our body I feel like my house is like a reflection of my body so sometimes if I get a clogged pipe I'm like let me just go check my root chakra because I probably (laughs) got a clogged pipe And, you know, one time I did that and I literally actually cleared my clogged pipe. So, and this other time I I like, I can't remember, but I think it was like, I wasn't feeling my emotions. And then my RV literally flooded. Wow. Right. So there's these, these, you know, this happens common, uh, happens often. But so in this case, you know, it's like, I want to sell my house. I don't want to sell my house. I don't like my house. I like my house. I don't know how I feel. And it's like, just this feeling of being unsettled in the body and so you know it's like no matter where you are you're gonna feel that no matter what house you're in yeah I I sort of came to that awareness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why I was like oh no now I'm selling my house for for that because of that oh no you know So it's absolutely too late, right? Like this is a done deal. There's nothing you can do about it. I can, there's nothing I can do about it without getting sued. Okay. Well, have you just talked to the other people and say like, hey, like, can we cancel this? If you don't, if they don't want to, like you won't, but I guess they're like getting ready to move in. Yeah. And their realtors are really nasty. And that's why, you know, I talked to my lawyer and I said, look, I having really bad PTSD. I can't move right now. And he's like, all right. And then talk to the realtor and she's like, you're going to get sued for lack, lack of performance of the contract. Cause these realtors are really nasty. And also the buyer is really neurotic. Oh, okay. And the other thing is I, the financially, I, I could go to this company that would give me $17,000 invest in the equity of the house and probably fix it up. And then I don't have, I just feel like I would have a lot of financial stress in the next six months that 
I'll have some of that anyway, but not as much. But if there is a way, like I could somehow get this lady to change her mind on her own, but I don't think I can. Okay, so let's break down the first part of what you said, because there's a part of you that is so used to being in that poverty consciousness of, you know, oh, I don't have, it's almost like this, and I can feel it in the back of the lower spine here, it's a block, it just feels like a a clog, (laughs) let's say, and it's because life force is not flowing into your system, so you think that there's only a finite amount of energy that you have. Right, okay. So it's represented by your savings, but we're really talking about life force. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this life force is represented and reflected in your savings account. And that's reflected in your choices and your reality of how you're experiencing. You're like, okay, no matter what I do, I'm not going to have enough money because my savings are going to run out. But that's the paradigm you're in where you're not flowing energy, right? You're not being open to the possibility that you're actually creating abundance. Abundance is flowing into your life. That money is not an issue. Okay. (sighs) (sighs) So here's a question that I have. Um, Do you have enough savings to pay a down payment on a place for a year and to live on that for six months like a down payment on a um on a an apartment well i just mean you know the years the paying a year's um rent rent. yeah i have i will when i sell the house okay so basically what you're telling me is you have enough money for a year's rent and to live let's say for a year yeah okay so I just want to say right now that your fears of like not having enough money is totally irrational yeah I mean the thing is that was the reason you know I (laughs) I really resonate with the thing about feeling unsafe in your body and that means unsafe in the house like that I was like this is the whole reason why this all this thing happened that I wanted to get rid of the house because I never felt safe here And then it started to fall apart and that makes total sense. So, Mm -hmm. and then if I, so then I was like, let me just sell the house and live on that money so I can develop the business. And then Mm -hmm. once I got far enough into the process, I was like, wow, there was another way to do this where I wouldn't have had to sell the house. But the way the way that's the clearest path forward where I have enough money to live without and and being able to focus on my business is to sell the house and honestly like you're already at the point now where you can't go back I can't I really can't so you're actually you're not actually in a bad place like the PTSD is making you feel all these fears like, oh, I'm going to be homeless. I'm not even going to be able to make it, blah, blah, blah. So it's creating this nervous system response, but you're not in any danger. And actually you are, you have all the tools, you have all the support, you have all of, you know, again, going back to that program in the beginning that we're inserting here, your love and your generosity is your source of infinite abundance, right? So we have, we're going to be learning in the next you know, a couple months on really activating that mechanism in your body. Okay. Right. And so everything in the universe is actually lining up for you to just make the leap to living your dream. Like that's, yeah, so that's the reality. That's, yeah. So the other thing about the house thing is like, the I thought, well, if I get rid of all the maintenance and all the work that you do in like the yard and all the the snow and shoveling, then I could like really just focus on the thing on the making the reality. So my next thing is I like emotionally, I need to have to go into a place that I love as much as now I love the house. Like the way I'm very visual. I like it when it's beautiful. I like it when we, you know, have access to the outside So that's sort of what I decided today when I started to actually be able to communicate with landlords and see things. I'm like, oh, it has to be beautiful in there. 
and it can't and it has to be the right price so that I can live many months if I have to and all that Mm -hmm. that's beautiful yeah and so I want us to just tap this and I can feel it in the vagus nerve and in like the cervical the cervix there's like nerves in there my whole my whole sacral chakra is very activated by this entire conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, it's this awkwardness because it's, it's like your soul and your body knows what's coming. It knows what's next for you. It knows what your higher self and God is lining up. And it's kind of tricky because you have parts that just don't quite believe it. And they're so afraid that they can't even see beyond the fear. But the reality is, like the truth of the reality of what you are on the precipice of is actually living your best life, living in pleasure, living a life where you not only have ease, but you're fulfilled and you're happy and you're doing what you love, the life that you deserve. Like that's literally like from my perspective, looking from the outside, looking in, that's what the universe is lining up for you. That's what your higher self and your body is lining up for you. Okay, so so the selling of the house, it was like a necessary part of this in some way, even though there was another way out. I think it's the cleaner way, the safer feeling way, even though I'm sort of, I'm sad to leave it now, but um, does that sound right? Like Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and here's the thing too, is that like, n- like there sometimes can be like all of these different, factors in our decision making right and like we have to just trust that whatever decision ends up being is like the highest for our soul okay right because there's all of these different factors and like the hologram like your higher self it's literally calculating all of the different aspects of the hologram right it's like well you know it's pretty here and we already had it figured out but but it's costing us a lot of money and is making me stressed. But, and if I sell the house, then I can get this money. And maybe parts of you didn't really like living where you live, or maybe your soul family is actually somewhere else, or maybe, you know, like all there's like known factors and there's unknown factors. And then because your higher self and your God self is like a quantum computer, it can take all of the data and calculate what's in the highest. And then your physical self, is going to go through the experience and so you're you're you have to time your physical self don't know that your higher self is setting you up for lessons and for growth and for the highest timeline all right that's great because i like at, like when i found out that oh there was a way to keep the house i was like wow i'm sorry i didn't know about that before i would have made a different decision but now i just have to move forward with what i did do Yeah, and, you know, trusting that it's in your highest, right? Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. I mean, what's your other option? Worry about it? I know, or not not sell the house and then get sued, and then there's, like, that whole other layer of complications of people coming at you. Yeah, no, you know, that's, forget like, it. that's not what you want to be experiencing right now. Yeah. And here's so, yeah. the thing, is Go that, ahead. like, with the root chakra, like, again, it's not actually about the house, right? Because before when you had the house your root chakra was feeling unsafe and so you felt like it was the house but then now that you don't have the house your root chakra is remembering that your house was your safety yes so so (laughs) um it's actually again not about the house right because chakra yep like if you had infinite abundance if you could live wherever you wanted you would you could just you know build the your dream house or live wherever you want like it wouldn't matter if you had this house or not right and the root chakra you know it's it's tricky because it takes time to it's just like the biggest and the densest chakra it takes a lot of time and whereas like your your mind your higher chakras they oscillate at a much higher frequency and so you can change things and make shifts much quicker. But whereas this is about your physical body. So, you know, think about how long it takes to heal like a cut. Um, right. It takes, you know, many days. Or if you need to, if you lose a chunk of meat, then it's going to take more days to grow that back. And so 
you know, in the physical matrix, things move slowly and takes time for rewiring because, you know, time in the physical just moves differently than time in the other dimension. Yeah. And then I finally, when I was walking my dogs this morning, because I, I, I have heart, heart pounding anxiety, so I woke up really early. I was like, you know, if I really want to focus on the business, I should just get rid of everything that feels like a burden, even though I love the house and I love being here. It is a clearer, it is a cleaner way to move forward. It's a, I can focus more if I don't have all these other things to worry about with the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I, again, you know, Myself. trusting in the safety of higher self and in the safety of the source of your abundance. Okay. <sighs> and that's a hard one. It takes, it will take time for that one to land because that one has to land in the root chakra. And that's kind of a big jump, right? From the false matrix provides me with my security and right. God and my higher self and my joy and my love provides me with my sense of security. It's just a different, it's just like a big um, operating system change. Yeah. <laughs> As the foundation of your life, right? And so then let's take action steps. Like let's talk about action steps forward because even a little bit of forward momentum is going to help you feel a lot better. So your pars can feel like there's a plan so okay, they can okay. lean on the plan, right? Okay. Um, so one thing I recommend is at least an hour, better two of root chakra work every day and where you can we're going to talk about some ways that that can happen okay okay because this is about slowing down because i think sometimes we can spin our tires spin our back wheels in our head and then we end up spending all of our time spinning our wheels instead of just slowing down and doing things one step at a time you know it's funny you say that because that was going to be one of the major things in my online course for trauma recovery was going to be first, you have to slow down. So I have to take my own medicine. Always. And again, this is why this is all a part of your training. Okay. That's a great way to think about it. Yeah. And you know, this is another time when we can say everything happens for me, not to Yeah. Me. Because then we immediately start to receive the teachings and receive the blessings and receive the way that our higher self is providing and teaching us versus sliding into victimhood and complaining and fear and all of that, right? Yeah, and confusion. Like I have a lot of confusion mm-hmm. about my decision-making process. <laughs> well, that's the human self, you know, feeling that way and that's okay. I was, I never, I was never a creator. The trauma really screwed up my decision, decision making. I was always in the flow, right? Until I was like in Guantanamo and I got traumatized and then that kind of wrecked it. So it'd be so nice to heal from that and go back into that flow. Mm -hmm. And also that trauma is a part of your training. Yes. Your soul set all that up, including this moment right now, because your soul knew that you'd be traumatized right you're a hologram you're outside of time you knew that you're going to be traumatized in Guantanamo that's why you went there because you are here to be a healer and you're going to help people heal their trauma so you had to get really traumatized (laughs) really traumatized yes (laughs) well you too (laughs) and yeah it's like how do I know these things because I've experienced them right why am I a good healer because I have the experience and so this is all like we can then actually flip into gratitude. Wow, look at this opportunity that I have to really step in to myself. And when you're on the other side of this, it's going to give you so much confidence. Right? That's great. Yeah. (sighs) 
And so I want you to be mindful of the way that you're speaking to yourself because you can see how we just re rewired that thought like mm -hmm. right as it came through. You're like, oh, well, you know, I don't know about my blah, 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 because I just went to this place and I got traumatized. And that is that part of you that's still running an old story. And so what we did was immediately recognize that that's what we were doing, which you have the capacity to do. Just listen to yourself and be aware in every moment of how you're talking and how you're thinking to yourself. Okay. okay? And every time you hear yourself, every time you hear yourself say, well, slide into victimhood or complain or be confused, you, you jump in and say, well, it's because my higher self already knew, and this is an opportunity for me to grow. Okay. Right. Because then you stop feeling like you're, you're losing control of your life and, oh, no, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's activates the fight or flight response. And you bring in the safety of that trust. Okay. Yeah. I've been really in fight or flight, like really. And which it's funny because when I was in the fight mode, I was they were have, doing something really stupid about the inspection of the house. And I was like, okay, guess what? I'm in fight mode now and I'm out of freeze. That's really good. I'm mad, but I'm <laughs> glad. Because freeze, I can't move. <laughs> Brilliant. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I like that visualization. I'm definitely feeling like a thawing, like there's like a defrosting going on of the yeah. room because that was frozen for a long time. Like when you were working in corporate and, you know, going to these places, like it, it wasn't, you didn't get to feel like your body wasn't in pleasure when you were doing your job. Oh yeah, right. I know it was awful. Cube farms. Ugh, I hate and the whole environment was toxic. Yeah. And so your body yeah. really froze and your creation process, your, your, your creativity center, your sexual organs all just like numbed out and froze. And so now they're thawing out. I can feel it. I can <laughs> feel it. I think they started thawing out. I think that's what they've been doing this whole, this whole time. Are you been talking? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I want to just do a, a feedback check-in with how your system is doing. So I'm going to ask, how are you feeling about your situation right now? So now I feel like I'm more clear. I feel, I don't feel afraid about getting an apartment. I actually feel confident about telling that land, whoever landlord I get, that you're only getting six months rent. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's an opportunity it's an opportunity instead of a loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An opportunity to create something new by giving up the house. Absolutely. And putting, mm -hmm. so there's this woman, I, I had this tarot reading because I, you know, my, I don't trust my creation process because of it. It's a, I think it's a trauma thing because that came up in one of the classes too. But um, it's checking things and she's like, the you move forward from the house. When you leave the house behind, you leave all of that stuff behind. Like to try to think about it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like absolutely. what I'm leaving behind to move forward. <sighs> and I can feel the relief in that. You feel it was like this giant boulder is just rolling off your field. Yeah, like all the low self-worth and all. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I, you know, when I was fixing up the house. To, and fixing up and painting and all this stuff. I, you know, I thought about my mother a lot and I thought about doing projects around her house and like, it, it was good. Brilliant. Yeah, I agree with that 8,000% because I mean, I've known you for a while and I feel like ever since I met you, it's been like five, six years you've been talking about selling this house. Ever since I bought it, cause I moved in. And first of all, it was really <laughs> ugly in here. And I was like, what have I done? I financially ruined myself and this house has so much shit wrong with it. What the hell did I do to myself? And then like four months after I got the house, I got laid off. And then I had to like drain half of my retirement account just to keep up with the bills. And I was like, no, get me rid of this. So I put on the market myself 
and I and I was asking too much money and nobody bought it. Plus it was like on the market in November. And so I'm like, all right, plus if I'm unemployed and I get and I sell the house, like who's gonna rent to me? So better not. So then I stay in the house and then I start to fix it up and paint it and make it all beautiful. And um, you know, I, I put it like an antique dresser for the vanity upstairs and I painted a new color and blah, 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 blah. And then now I finally feel good about the house and I say, okay, see you later. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, it's like a voodoo doll, you know? It's like a, in a good way. It's like a, a physical object that represents, you know, your upgrading. And yes, and I feel like the way things start for me is really important. Um, the reason, the motivation behind why we create something is really important because that sets the tone for what comes next. Um, okay, okay, that's great. Because what I was telling Devante, I said, I, I'm making this house into my art project before I sell it. Like, so it's my art project. It's not like anything else now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's um, when you, because when, I, I think this thought's probably going to come up again, okay? When you start thinking that, oh, you know, I could have not sold the house, immediately yeah. nip that in the butt and say that's a part that's repeating an old story and update the software. Okay. Yeah. So I'll okay. just think of the house as everything, all of like the... I upgraded the house because it was like the low self-worth in the part. And, and I just like have to leave that behind in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, I feel like some, like your higher self was probably just getting tired of the wheel spinning. Like, all right, Betsy, you've been here for however many years and we're still in the same place as when we started and we just keep going in circles. And so now we really have to create a scenario where we have to encourage you to bust out of that. And the way that we're going to do that is by leaving this stupid house. And you're going to get fired and then you're going to have, and then you're going to be under more pressure. And then you're going to have to, you know, what pressure, you know, what creates that force oh. that then makes the seed blossom. It's pressure. It's gravity. Yeah, the, the diamond creates the yeah. diamond. Mm-hmm. So if they're, you know, because I feel like that those jobs and different things have really made it easy for you to be comfortable too. Right. <laughs> that one job that, 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 well, the one job let me buy the house and then I got laid off and then I got the other job that paid more money. So I was just like in and out and in and out and I was comfortable, but I also had the thought, this job is not let, I'm so tired after work from this job that I can't move forward into what I want to do. Mm -hmm. then I got fired mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you universe okay so here's the thing Betsy is that okay I perceive that the whole universe is conspiring for you to succeed and your higher self has lined all of this up everything for you to succeed right because we're about to enter the business section of our school and Agreed right? We're going to learn all these skills that get us moving. Like we're going to launch our business inside of that container. Oh, or, wow. you know, it's like, you can, I mean, you have the opportunity to, if you feel like you want to do that. Right. Yes. Um, so that everything in the universe is literally lined up one by one for you to be ready to launch your new life. And I have to say that it's still not given. What does that mean? It means that if you just sleep every day and don't do anything, then nothing's going to happen, right? Right. All, what I'm saying is that the universe has made it very easy for you to succeed. And so, but you still have to take a step. It's like the universe has taken nine steps <laughs> towards you, but you still have to take one step towards the universe oh. to complete the process. Okay. Right? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
All right, so, okay, we wanna do one more clearing here. We're gonna pull through frequency, connecting to Betsy's higher self and galactic angelic team. I'm just gonna uh, command for all pieces of Betsy's soul that might have gotten lost or been taken or frozen somewhere for all pieces and all of her energy to brought back, to be brought back in this moment now unfrozen, cleared with the love light of source, absolutely restored to their higher self vibrancy and return to her through the higher self and her high heart. And allow all the energy to sink right down into the root chakra and settle. Whew. Okay. Okay, and if there is any part of Betsy's consciousness or energy that is frozen in a past timeline or in a, in a misbelief or stuck in a thought loop or any processes like that in her multidimensional body, go ahead and defrost and bring all those parts and energies back into her field, restore them into their freedom, into their higher self vibrancy. Ooh, there. Ooh. Okay, just bring all of her into the present moment here now. Integrate her with these new energies that we've been pulling in today. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Okay, I'm just integrating these new frequencies into all the layers, physical and our etheric bodies and all dimensions and all timeline realities. <clears throat> okay, how are you feeling? I feel like I feel like my frequency is much higher and I can feel like my energy the energy flowing more clearly instead of all that confusion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I just feel my frequency is higher and it's like sort of coming off of the front of my body. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is that we want to talk about practical ways that we're going to work on our root chakra over the next while. And yeah, I think I'm still disconnect. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I said, I'm still a little disconnected from it because the, my root chakra activating just gives me sensation in my sacral chakra instead of, and I know what my root chakra is supposed to be like. So I'm still not all the way connected to it. And that's okay. You know, it's, that's a good, that's a good step. Like that, noticing that is step one, right? Remember in yeah. our steps of healing, step number one is just noticing because right. most people aren't, most people are not connected to their root chakra at all i know it's crazy because there's like living life decapitated um, yeah society society fosters that the matrix yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> um it's actually kind of cool that you know you have a month 
at this place because a month is a significant enough time to make progress in the root chakra um, and to have noticeable results okay right? noticeable transformations um, so a month is a really good chunk of time usually for root chakra work it's about four to six months before the really deep stuff actually comes out okay um, and for that reason I would actually consider getting an apartment for a year for your growth for okay. your healing the reason for that is that you know, you, you just want to create the most stable environment for yourself. Yeah. Right. I mean, like paying, paying for it for a year or at least signing a year lease or oh, yeah, you know, for creating, sure. creating some sort of stability so that when six months rolls around, you don't have any environmental fears that's going to trigger you. And then because what happens with the root chakra work is it really needs stability and stillness and consistency to get anywhere. So for a lot of people, if you're used to, I know that, you know, maybe this is not the case for you, but I know that um, a lot of young people that move around a lot, like every oh, yeah, month they have to move. Yeah. That's like, so that's a protective mechanism that you never actually get into the deepest layers of the root chakra where most of our pain is. Okay. So this is, I had an intuition that I needed. Remember when I was telling you all, all the places I investigated going and then I, and I said, no, I need to stay in Albany for another year before I do anything. And so that was the intuition about this. Good. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. Because it's like right now, it's not really about the external. It's not really right. about where you're going to live and what community you're going to be with. I mean, Right now, you're focusing really on the inner transformation so you can create a literally a new reality for yourself. Okay. Right? Because once you have that six-figure healing business, you can move wherever you want. Right? That's and, exactly what I know, said. The yeah. reality. Mm -hmm. Great. Good work. So you recognize that actually your intuition is on point. And that is just that sometimes we don't listen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or I like think it's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Good work. Whew. Yeah. So I'm glad that, you know, you know that because like I said, we just don't want any external fears to make you go backwards because we know that we need a year long container to really get root chakra done, root chakra okay. work done because the four to six month mark is crucial. Okay. This is this is the chunk of time when I see most of the failure happen, most of the actually deep inner child wounding come out. And then, you know, people will literally just destroy their whole lives to keep themselves from actually moving into the deeper layers. And it's hard. Wow. I mean, I noticed this on the land, right? Because this is what happens on the land is that I noticed when I first got to the land, the land said, we're healing the root chakra and it's going to take us years. <laughs> Um, because again, you know, I've lived my whole life in the false matrix and in order to shift all of myself into a new reality, I have to shift all of my physical being into this new reality. And that actually, they told me it takes seven years. Right. Okay. Every seven years you regenerate all your cells, right? Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. You even have a new physicality, right? So. But the thing is that the first couple of years is really, you know, with focus intent, I noticed that when I first moved out to the land, I was like, okay, I'm healing my root chakra. And then it was four, six months into that process that the root fear started coming up. And then that's also when I was like, am I going to make it? So it's like the land tested me and I had to live in this RV for eight months before I got to move into my house because the land needed me to commit and make sure that I was going to make it through that time and I've watched people come to the land hit that four month mark go through a crisis and leave wow um, because at this point on earth going through our root chakra stuff is hard that's when all of you know people with like childhood sexual abuse trauma financial fears um, tribal fears tribal belonging all of the more like dark collective 
depth of pain, like being severed from the planet, like the, the, these levels of pain, you don't just sit down in meditation for five minutes and get to, right? You need to be in meditation every day for months to get there. Yeah. It's like getting into the elevator and keep going down until you find the core wounding, which most people aren't patient enough or don't don't know why they would possibly want to do that but the thing is that the the source of our liberation actually lies there and so the only person that's left on the land is actually Sarong and he's really fighting it right now wow um because this is his six month mark <laughs> yeah so so Taryn just like took Brian's side like and left with like they all wow that's intense yeah but it was so good it was like this purge like as soon as everyone it was very interesting because like I was going through this extraordinary root chakra shift right it's like um I was starting to receive information about miracle miracle conception and in order for you like I mean that's like the highest like miracle power you can have as a woman and so it, it's like some people think oh yeah it just happens to you by accident but it really is like you know being able to miraculously heal people it takes a high level of practice and mastery and dna activation to get to that point of being able to access enough god inside of your body to do god things right and so you know i told them that that's the kind of stuff that i was planning on accessing and that everybody needed to if if that's what the land is for, the land is a monastery, it's for mastery, right? That's why I have the land. That's why I got the land in the way that I did. And so on a soul level, people were like, actually, I'm not here to access that level of mastery, or maybe I'm not ready to go there. And, you know, for the most part, like the root chakra stuff is like, it's just so uh, multifaceted, right? Yeah. Um, and so anyway, going back to our discussion about your plan, um, basically you need a safe space where you won't be disturbed for a year, right? Because that's, that's like, you're going to hit that four to six month mark and you want to make sure that you are creating the environment for yourself that is safe you don't want to create an external situation where you get kicked out of a place or you have to move because then you're going to go backwards right yeah so i have to be careful who's living in the building or go to like a more rural environment or something yeah i mean that's a great idea going out into a rural environment is a great idea like the quieter and the more peace that you can have you know, the better, right? Because you have less agitation and less of that conflict, fear energy in your environment. So I almost got a cabin, but it was kind of the wrong time. It was amazing little three bedroom, beautiful. This woman was a potter. She was trying to go up to the Adirondacks to sell her pottery. And so she's renting it. And it just wasn't the right, the timing of my house sale wasn't right to get it. Mm -hmm. But I can get another one. Yeah, you'll find something, right? And this is good because you're setting up a chunk of time. You're saying this year is about me creating pleasure and ease and success for myself. You're doing this entire year for you. Okay. Yeah, doesn't that feel exciting? It does. And so to get the little financial, you know, I thought I would get some job that's not, that doesn't take a lot out of me, like working in the co-op or something. Or just, I would say no to that. No, (laughs) like no job, just like, (sighs) because I mean, I, I personally know just how much effort it takes like it's not like being a healer and starting a healing business is not just about starting a business right right it's not just you going and helping people it's really 80 percent of it is your in- internal work like right. being a successful healer because i mean the reason why i'm successful now is because my work actually really works 
right? It yeah. helps, you know, it pierces through and the energy actually works. Why does it actually work? Because I've literally put in seven years of yeah. healing myself for like three to four hours a day, wow. nonstop, every day. Yeah, and clear. that was just like the obsession that I was in. Like, it's not, it's not like I was like, okay, 10 to 10, 12 PM, I'm going to heal myself. It was like, it was just like, I wake up in the morning and I'm scanning myself. And then the whole day I'm noticing where my holes are. I'm, I'm restoring my field. And so that's why I'm in this place now where helping people is so easy because I've literally just been helping myself this whole time. Wow. Wow. And so I'm not saying that you need to get that crazy, but you can't, right? It's like the crazier that you get, the more successful and the faster is going to happen because it is just about you completing this initiation. And, you know, that's why I can't give people certifications for becoming a shaman or becoming a healer right. because it all depends on, it's a holographic process of how much a person actually takes themselves seriously and puts themselves first and really shows up for themselves. And I believe that you have the opportunity to do that. And I know that Betsy, you've been on this path for a long time. And so it's really just about putting things in the right space. Like it's, you, it won't take you seven years because for me, I was just waking up and like, you know, I, I, the seven years was me being on my path and exploring and learning and waking up and all of that. You've already experienced those things, you know, more spread out over a longer period of time. So right now you're really just putting everything together. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So then this little, my little cabin in the woods has to be pretty cheap if I'm not going to (laughs) work. And so here's the thing is that, okay. The reason why I asked you if you had enough money for a year's rent and to live off of that money for a year is because a year is more than enough time to establish a successful coaching business. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. The main thing that's stopping you is the insecurities, the root chakra, the distractions, the masculine side. Right. And all of that, I think, is going to take about two, three months if you just focus and get, your, you know, just focus on that one thing. And so what I'm saying okay. is that it feels like in two, three months, you're going to be able to just launch your business and find success, but you're oh. not going to be able to do that if you're, you know, distracted or working somewhere else. Like you need all of your int- attention and focus on this now. And that's why the universe is literally backing you into a corner. Like 